fantastic. Hey everyone, this is Chris Keesmore from Your Guitar Today. I'm joined by Steve Hill, Canadian, our neighbor to the north. Steve, how are you doing? I'm good. Man, it's, uh, nice, it's ni nice talking to you, Chris. Yeah, this is it's the, good to be here. Yeah, this is an absolute blast. Uh, I've encountered your music through one of those dark, deep YouTube black hole dives where you know you click on something, something gets recommended, and the next thing I know, I'm watching the guy play drums, guitar. He's got pickups that are stacked, and I'm like, I gotta know more about this guy. So that's what brought me. Literally, I, then I reached out to you through your website, and here we are today. That's awesome. Yeah, so I think the perfect place to start will be the guitar, because as we find out, you use a lot of old guitars, and uh, right there, you can see it yourself, folks, a uh, uh, gold foil pickup. Go for it, man. Tell us about this. This is a 59 Les Paul uh, TV model. Um, it's been uh, modified a little bit, but uh, not tremendously, <laughs> and it, it can be brought back to... to, to it's original condition, so there's no extra holes, no, no extra, uh, you know, like, first of all, you got the pickup here. Yep. That uh, beautiful gold foil. Uh, it's used uh, for the bass, because as you see, it's, it's offset, so it only picks up the sound of the three bigger strings. And uh, I have a stereo output on my guitar, okay. and it goes through a splitter. So the bass signal goes through a POG electroharmonics octaver, Sometimes I use a distortion pedal or uh, the amp is cranked louder. It depends. Uh, right now I have an overdrive distortion pedal because this, you know, it's basically what what I found uh -huh. <laughs> today. <laughs> but uh, and I can't really crank it up as much as live uh, <laughs> today. So, <laughs> but usually uh, it's like a and the amp is a, uh, is a 1966 uh, B15 Ampeg. Okay. So. So that's basically the sound. So now, that also implies that you can't really, you can't play uh, like what you usually play with a guitar, you know, you, you do like stuff like... But it's just mud with this. So you can't do any fifths on the bottom strings. So uh, <laughs> I had to completely uh, re rethink how I played, you know. Uh, uh, so it, it's gotta be octaves on the bigger strings, you know, you can't, cause it, you know, then it's just, it's just mud basically. Now, now let's dive a little deeper into the evolution of this. Now, what prompted you to go to this length? And, and like you kind of alluded to before, there's no actual surgery in the guitar. It kind of slides under the strings. So there's no routing that that extra pickup has. But what, was it something that you were like, I want to be a one-man band and this is how I need to get there? Or is it trial and error? All, it's all accidents. Okay. I never wanted, I never wanted to be a, a one-man band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never planned for that. But about uh, like 10 years ago, I released an album and it, it just bombed. Nothing happened with it. There was no promotion. A and uh, I've always been a professional musician uh, since the age of like 17, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know how to do anything else. So I had to make a living, you know, so <laughs> and I own a studio. So I figured, you know, I'll just do some solo shows and I'll record a little solo album that I'll sell at these solo shows. And uh, that uh, that little album is Solo Recordings Volume One. And it's my best selling album. Uh, it's a it great just, name. It, 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 it completely changed uh, my career, you know. Uh, it really helped me uh, in many ways. And then I had to do Solo Recordings Volume 2 and Solo <laughs> Recordings Volume 3. But on Volume on volume 1, it's, it's very simple. It's just basically I'm foot stomping. Okay. And I, I'd put a mic on the floor, and halfway through the record, I bought a bass drum. Mm. And then uh, <laughs> I bought a hi-hat. So you got hi-hat on like four songs. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, on the acoustic songs, sometimes I use this, which is a can with coins in it. And every, every acoustic song that I've recorded has this on my right foot. And it, it works better than anything else I've found. <laughs> so, so basically, it started with just guitar and foot stomping or really basic stuff. But then I was touring and uh, before before I did this solo thing, I sort of had a rock and roll band, you know. I've seen you play surf guitar, man, on a Telecaster. I, I, I used to do that too. <laughs> I've done many different things, you know, but 
basically, when, you know, if you're on a stage, you kind of want to rock out. Uh, and, and sometimes the audience really wants you to rock, rock out, and you can't really do it with just acoustic guitar and, you know, foot stomp. And so, the, you know, eventually I thought about adding that because I wanted a bigger sound, you know. Mm -hmm. 